If you're thinking that you want to take that action step, why wait? Book your session right now. Go to liberateyourself.com. Click on either Liberate Hollywood or Liberate Emporium. See our amazing practitioners and who resonates most with you. And then book a session via Skype, phone, or in person. We're here for you, and it's your time to start creating your life. Mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more. From health and holistic healing to the supernatural, we aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today we're bringing in one of the patrons of Liberate Emporium that really just touched both me and a couple other of our practitioners' lives here with his radiant energy. He comes into the store quite frequently and, you know, we had to ask him a little bit more about what he does because we knew that he was a gifted healer. Uh, His aura is just, you know, like when you just sometimes are in somebody's space and you just feel it like kind of even push you back. It's so powerful that that's our, that's our guest today. His name is Kyle. He does energy work. Um, He also is very active within the physical body and does personal training, mapping both over the spiritual essence and the personal training and does coaching, uh, clairvoyant and, you know, just, you know, true gifted, you know, coming into this world with lots of different gifts that continues his uh, trainings in many different disciplines. And he wants to share the importance of Uh, being in alignment with yourself and having that self-awareness. And so today's topic is just that, self-awareness and that importance of of discovering it, having it, and stepping into who you truly are. Okay, so welcome, Kyle. Wow, Christina, thank you for that lovely introduction. I feel amazing uh, being in this uh, presence and being able to speak to your wonderful audience and the audience that is connecting with us now. Ah. And yes, so today it's it's uh, a beautiful day and we have the opportunity to enjoy this moment as well as the moments we're creating for everyone else here that's tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. All right. So Kyle, is there anything that you want to share about yourself to people besides what I just shared? Like Yeah, so I've recently came to the conclusion that I am a human being. And I am, <laughs> I am, yes, I am human and I'm living on earth. I've also concluded that this is definitely not the first time I've ever been here. And so that just sparks a lot of questions. A lot of questions about my life, why I'm here, what my purpose is. And I always encourage people to ask that for themselves, why we're here, what our purpose is, and to really check in and tune in with that. Um, You know, I've been on this path of self-discovery ever since I came from my mother's womb and going through different illusions of separation, whether it's, you know, being separated from the umbilical cord to being separated from myself and and trying to identify with other people or even other extraterrestrial races, using them as keys to identify with, such as the, you know, Arcturians, Palladians, and different just... There's so much in this world that we can identify with. Um, And really what I've been coming full circle back to is just connecting to myself, connecting to my essence and listening and being still and knowing that wherever I am is perfect and wherever you are is exactly where you need to be. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, that's 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 the thrown around topic mm. of discussion for a lot in the self-help spiritual mm-hmm. genre. Um, and a lot of people talk about it, but uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like those one thing like love. Like a lot of people talk about what love is or what education is or whatever the case may be, but a lot of people have different meanings. You know, mm. you walk into a room and you ask, you know, somebody, you know, name three adjectives to describe love or name 
name three adjectives to describe education, and I would almost guarantee that in a room of 100 people, not more than two people will have the same adjectives. And in those two people that have the same adjectives, they won't have all three of them alike. Mm-hmm. And so we have this like bearing of like everybody thinks that they mm. understand what that means, but you know what is what that means, and and, and it can be different for different people. But let's yes. let's let's put the let's put a basis of a of a, some groundwork foundation of what do you mean by being true to yourself or the mm. that that connection to that self and yes. what is what is yes that? great great question I love prying into this and and you have the right tools to help us dig deeper self it is you know this essence of who we are when we feel our best and when we feel our best oftentimes we are off also holding space for others to feel their best too so being true to yourself is is i like to think of it as being our child self but our child self before we were before we may have picked up traits from our parents in a sense so really listening to your feelings and understanding when there are feelings that don't resonate with you and and then diving into those and in being true to yourself, you know, I, I think of ourself as being this clean slate human being who's never been hurt, who's never been told they're a lesson, who's never been um, sexually abused, who's never been doubted themselves, who's who's just completely clean, this imaginary person who's never had any type of conditioning. And in that essence, they walk around with love, just like a child, typically, a, a, you know, if you give love to a child, they're just a ball of love back completely and if there's anything that's in resistance you know there's somewhere in that self that they need to free themselves from that resistance so it's really cleaning yourself energetically physically emotionally in all ways cleaning yourself so that you can be a clear reflection of love the divine source universe and in that you treat others as if you're looking at yourself okay so what i'm hearing you say just to clarify a little bit for those that might be listening is that how you're defining the true essence of yourself is removing all of the shields and armors judgments rules and regulations that we've placed on ourselves as we've navigated the world and we became meaning making machines making Mm. you know things mean different things and so if we remove all of those types of experiences and what is the essence of who you truly are uh, without judgment, reasoning, rationality, whatever the case may be, you know, without that conditioning. Yes. So that's what we're talking about here is like how to strip away some of those conditioning layers to be able to be that. Because some people say, oh, well, you know, that's easy for you to say. But, you know, I have these circumstances where, you know, um, I have, you know, four kids at home or I have to pay for this or work is hard or, you know, like my my, you know, best friend's dying or this or that. You know, people will have these. Yeah. buts. Right. You know, and it's 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 how to, and maybe that's where we can take this, is how to navigate uh, beyond those yeah buts mm-hmm. and still peel away those layers and allow somebody to not make those conditionings their essence of their reality or define them. Right. You yes. Know? Yes. And it is not easy. It's it's definitely it's a challenge, and I find you know when we when we want something. Um, it, the universe, even even aspects of ourselves, will deliver what we want to us. So, say we want to be more loving, we want to be more peaceful, we want to be, we want to have less anxiety. Well, it's not just going to disappear. It, it's going to show up so much that you're going to be challenged to find a new pathway of experiencing anxiety, or or a opportunity to see what it is in your emotional field that is causing you to be anxious. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, with those conditions, when we, when we become aware of the conditions or the shields and armor that we have on us, we can then, we can see it and we can look at it on our shoulder and be like, oh, I got this shoulder plate from my mom because my mom used to always, you know, be a victim. Something like, some, one of these different types of um, conditionings. Mm -hmm. So it's, be, once you become aware of it, you will start to become more aware of it in your day-to-day -day life. And then the process is, is digesting those feelings that come from it, like how we're feeling from it. And then if your feelings are a direct indicator of your alignment with yourself. So if your feelings are feeling less than good, well, I find in my experience that there's something in there that is worth having a conversation with mm -hmm. and experiencing. And I will say that just like when I personal train, when my clients come to me and they say that they want a, um, you know, a slimmer waistline, I'll say, okay, so your goal is a slimmer waistline and it takes work so they have to build the mental capacity to to imagine or visualize what it feels like to have that slimmer waistline and then that's just one part of it the visualization so we're at one mark and we visualize what it feels like to have that slim waistline and now every single day you're going to be ex bombarded with experiences or opportunities to either get to that slimmer waistline or to get away from it and so it's you know choosing to eat better have better choices or even to think better things about ourselves so it's it's really how we get to this place of being true to ourselves or our true selves it's it's you know the big goal is removing the conditions and then how we get there so we can imagine ourselves unconditioned we can imagine ourselves full of love full of light full of acceptance consideration patience generosity all of these beautiful things and what it feels like maybe there's someone in our life that reflects that to us already or there's multiple people that together they reflect this whole person that we know we can be but it's being in this human body we experience time we've been conditioned to experience time as being from one two three four to ten mm -hmm. and so that's how our days move so we have to take the human footsteps every single day to choose either to be in that condition that we've been conditioned with or to be beyond it and to move past it and part of the recognition of that that's you know the halfway mark seeing that oh, okay i often feel this way and mm -hmm. this feeling is an, an aspect of this conditioning that I got from this person in my life. And you don't have to track it that far, but sometimes having somewhere to track back and to look at uh, where this thing came into your life is really helpful in resolving the issue. It's kind of mm -hmm. like you, know, you get to zoom out and see, oh, this, this, this. Because we are these intelligently created programs. And with that, there's a lot of different viruses, but we have the master key, so we can, you know, we can erase everything, but it's work, mm -hmm. and, and it takes those human footsteps to do that. Okay, so take me through a little bit of, you know, uh, so what you're saying is it's, it's peeling away some of the conditioning and reconditioning mm -hmm. yourself to a different way of being. So it's finding out how to become that pure energy again and then create the actual experiences and views and perspectives that you actually want instead yes. of it just were inheritant or just that you adapted through you know, experiences or other people or your circumstances in life or whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, everything's a little easier said than done. Let's look at for a moment on maybe how that would be, how, how you would take like a client through that mm. process. The best way that I can recommend to do this is to treat everyone as if you're talking to yourself, as if they've come from the exact same source as you or from the same mother and that they are really just a piece of you and so it's honoring them and speaking to them with compassion and knowing that if someone feels hurt then you're hurting yourself too or you're feeling hurt and how can we move past that instead of separating ourselves further and feeling like it's your fault for me feeling bad it's oh you're feeling bad 
what can I do or what can I reflect to help you feel better? Yeah. I think that that's uh, a very important thing to really kind of take a hold because, you know, in therapy, uh, Mm. when I work with clients and stuff like that, you know, one of the things that I always repeat over and over again, like a broken record, is your outside world is a reflection of your internal state. So saying that, you know, with uh, putting that out there and saying, you know, to look at people as if they're you, because ultimately... You know, and I think what you're tapping in here to is the realization and the awareness, and maybe some people aren't ready to hear that, but if they're playing that victim role, and if they're saying that the world's out to get them, really they're saying that they're out to get their self. Mm. They're mm. not they're not supporting their self, they're not loving their self, they're not treating their self with kindness, a generosity, understanding, compassion. Mm. And so they feel that the world is doing that to them. But really, I would wonder if we could open up their head and hear their internal dialogue of the things that they were saying to their self in situations, whether that would be more reflective of the way that they viewed the world. Completely. You know, because I I say say this time and time again, I've probably said it on a couple of these podcasts, (laughs) guys, so I'm sorry. But, you know, like, I don't see, like, you know, the the people that love their self the most. Like, we go back to, like, school, since a lot of the are Mm. conditioned is when we were little munchkin butts, you know? <laughs> um, it, you know, the, the people that love their self the, the, and, and are happy with who they are are not the bullies in school. They're not the people that are picking on people. Those people actually tend to have the most insecurity, self-doubt, and anger and hatred towards their self. You know, and so then they go and they pick on an innocent person that, you know, might be in a wheelchair, might dress a little funny or might be poor and can't afford new shoes. It's like, why are they doing that? Mm. You know, because they're in that space. They're not loving them. So that inability to love their self, their eyes shine that out. Yes. And so I love that you're saying that in the way that you said that. You know about viewing people from the same source energy Mm -hmm. and realizing even within that space i love the 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 thing that you said about not taking on their stuff either right you know because it's kind of like a twofold you know you have to Mm -hmm. detach yourself and say you know and realize that how you're perceiving but see if you have love and compassion towards somebody and you have love and compassion towards yourself, you say, okay, well, this is just their circumstance. I don't have to judge it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just exactly where they're at. Completely, yes. You know? And so let them go through that issue. Let them be angry and throw the bottle against the Mm -hmm. wall. Let them, whatever the case may be, that's where they're at. Yes. We haven't walked in their shoes. We don't know their journey. We only know our journey. And the more that we can have that compassion, the more that... We don't have to perpetuate the issues and the problems. Right. And and walk up to the person and say, what the heck's your problem? Rah, rah, right. rah, rah. And then yeah. what happens is it just explodes. Yeah. Engage, <laughs> engaging those egoic traits that they're already experiencing. Because, you know, when we're experiencing those, you know, traits of uh, aggression or upset or feeling like the world is out to get us rather than the world is for us. We're disconnected from our source. We're we're. It's almost like we are just cutting ourselves off from that great source of love that is always present to us. But it it doesn't. It won't always feel like it if we cut ourselves off. And when we cut ourselves off, that's basically when we start to feel depression. Mm-hmm. And I find that anxiety is a form of accelerated growth minus the trust and faith of that connection. Mm -hmm. So it's like you just, you know, you're going forward, but you don't have faith and trust that you are supported. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what I, yeah. It's like this, like, huh? Yeah. Because they're, you know, what is anxiety is, uh, it's, you know, pretty much by definition, it's a preoccupation with a future or over, um, occupation with past. Right. Mm -hmm. So like somebody's constantly thinking about the future, constantly thinking about the past. Why? Because they don't trust that it's going to be okay no matter how it happens. So they're playing out those scenarios over and over in their their mind because they think that one of those scenarios cannot happen and it would be devastating. So there's a lack of trust. Yes, yes. And anxiety is something that I'm sure we have all experienced because we have these 
minds that at sometimes can be very flighty. And we can go left, we can go right, we can go up, down, all around. But when we really take a moment to just step or sit or stand and close our eyes and breathe, returning to the breath, and if, if really we just took a look at our life forward and backwards, we would see that we're still alive and everything that we've ever thought about may or may not have happened. Chances are that they haven't happened. If we're living in a state of, you know, um, focusing on the future or worrying about the past. And the past really is irrelevant because what has happened has happened and it needs to be healed, accepted, and integrated into your present. And then if we think about the future, without faith and trust that the future is going to be everything that you need it to be or want it to be, or even greater than you could ever expect, if we do not have faith and trust in those things, then we experience anxiety. So my advice for anyone who experiences anxiety is to take a moment to focus on your breath and how soothing it is to feel the cold air go down. And while you feel your lungs, feel your lower belly with air, exhale out and know that you are going through exactly what you need to go through at exactly the right time in exactly the right circumstances for you to become everything that you want to become in your life. And really have faith and trust in the flow of the universe, of God, and completely surrender into that. So there's four principles that I would like to touch on, and that is surrendering to the flow with faith and trust. So it is being able to, in this moment, I'm feeling anxiety. So I surrender, I surrender completely. I surrender my will for the will of my highest self, for the will of my highest potential. I surrender to God, the universe, to source, to life, to more, to whatever it is that you surrender to completely. And then have faith and trust into the flow that everything is working out just as it should. And this goes for if you're feeling like the world is out to get you, which you may not now, but sometimes we, we might have to experience that to grow further or to have more contrast to know ourselves. And that's okay. Everything is okay. And it really can feel okay if you completely surrender yourself with faith and trust to the flow. And once you do that, life is fun. It's how kids live. They mm -hmm. are completely surrendered. No part of them is, they're just surrendered to it. And they have complete faith and trust that everything's gonna be taken care of. And if they want that toy, they probably know those conditions, they can cry and they'll get that toy. They've, <laughs> got, they've got those, whatever it is. But they live in that flow. So it's returning to the flow and knowing that, you know, we live in a very modern society where we have a lot of um, stimuli. So it's sometimes you can be overstimulated and that can cause, you know, sorts of um, energetic drains or just distractions from what's really going on. Instead of, you know, sometimes I would recommend instead of watching TV to kind of uh, distract you, Take a minute to just breathe. And if you find that sitting with your eyes closed and breathing is, is challenging, well, uh, challenging is a sign that it is something that is worth working on. Mm -hmm. Work on it. Work on being content with being with yourself and surrendering to yourself and having faith and trust in yourself that as you go into the flow, everything you want will turn to you. It's just the trust and the faith in that. It's yeah. so important. I love that. I love that. I, you know, I, I hope that the people that are, are listening can, you know, kind of resonate with those words and, you know, that it's all it's about, you know, we're just having an experience, we're on a journey, we're on a road, <laughs> yeah. whether we take, you know, 
this freeway or that freeway, whether there's traffic or not, you know, you're just you're just driving down a path, you know, yes. and, you know, taking a moment to just be present to the circumstances that are around you, what trees are on the left and right, you see yes. mountains and ocean, whatever you see or experience, but always know that you're in control of it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't like the traffic jam, fear off to the right, you know, yeah, get, get yeah. off at the next exit. It yeah. doesn't matter, you know, or sit in and make the most of it. Sometimes you know? I think, you know what, if, if I'm stuck in traffic, this is where my energy needs to be. This is where I need to be right here. Yeah. Just sitting. And then maybe put on an audio book, maybe just sit and be, maybe you make a call and catch up with a friend, exactly. you know, like, but there's always things, you know, uh, to do and experience. Kyle, if you had to leave everybody with a... Uh, um, another tidbit of wisdom mm. and thought, what would it be? Have fun. Life is not so serious. Laugh. Make others laugh. Be silly. Sing. Dance. Dance. This life is a dance. Fill your body with movement. Don't be sedentary. Get up. Stretch. Stretch the body. The body holds tension. Tension needs attention. Give your body attention. The two best things we have in this world is number one, our bodies. Number two is earth. Because without earth, our bodies couldn't be here. Without our bodies, we couldn't be here. Take care of earth, take care of your body. Stretch, eat healthy, hydrate, pray, do yoga, dance. I just have to say, have move around, dance, and have fun. And he likes this dancing analogy <laughs> yes, here. He's yes. like saying, get out and dance, move. which which is interesting. We had a class here last night oh. on uh, abundance, mm. and um, you know, at the end of the night, uh, the facilitator that was doing the class had everybody dance, and you know, yeah. kind of helped her out a little bit because people were a little, you know, yeah. not not dancing, but we created, you know, like the two rows. You know, made people go down in the middle, and and by the end of it, everybody was feeling a hundred percent better. You yes. know, well, maybe not a hundred percent. I might be exaggerating, the but shifted. but it shifted. Mm. Just going and moving. All yes. right, yes. how? Where can people find you? People can find me on. I, I write for this website called HeartOfCool.com. Uh, this is where I publish some of my articles, and they can also find me on Instagram at Enlightened Bodies. So that's Enlightened Bodies with an I-E-S. And All right. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining. And for all of our listeners, uh, you know, this is my shameless plug of rating us, leaving a comment because it helps people find us. If you could leave a comment on iTunes, that would be preferred. Of course, you know, we'd love to start getting some comments on some of the other things too, like Podbean and different stuff like that as well. We always find our our podcast on our website on liberateemporium.com under the tab for podcasts. You can find us on iTunes at uh, liberate the podcast and of course on all the other ones stitchers pod all of that same thing liberate the podcast thank you for joining us and until next time <laughs>